What is going on? This is episode 691 of the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VL Fowler. Over here, we talk about Georgia Southern and Atlanta Falcons football. The Atlanta Falcons and Georgia Southern both win ugly. They get ugly wins, but a win is a win. We're also going to talk about B. John Robinson, his uh, limited play. Now, I, I got a little theory behind that. Hopefully, you guys will, uh, you know, uh, follow me on this one because I, I think it makes a lot of sense. But we'll get into that. Um, so, Really quick, just go right into it. If this is your first time here, welcome. I can be found on YouTube and Rumble. I'm also on Anchor, Spotify, and Apple, and Google Podcasts. I want to thank you guys for the support. You guys have been absolutely amazing uh, supporting the show. Uh, I cannot thank you guys enough. I can be found on Twitter or X at Via Voller, and the website is firstinframerates.com. You can go over there and actually sign up to subscribe to any of the podcast avenues uh or also subscribe to the channel if you have it and also you can support the show all right let's go ahead and get into this um the falcons won 16 13 ugly in ugly fashion very ugly fashion um three turnovers in the red zone a lot of people are blaming desmond ritter which i you know looking back at it now the only one i blame him for is the one when he tried to nonchalantly walk into the end zone. The 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 fumble snap, yeah, I guess you could say that. Yeah, it was on him. It could have been on the center. Who knows? Um, but nevertheless, those two happened. Now, the other one, the sack fumble, I don't blame that on nobody, but Kayla McGarry, you know, like, where's Storm Norton? Like, where is he? Like, I, he played so good the other game, and now he's not playing. But, you know, it, it's weird. But other than that, the game itself was pretty much dominated by the Falcons. The Falcons did pretty good at limiting, you know, uh, Mike Evans after that one touchdown catch. You know, other than that, I mean, they did, their offense really did nothing. Shout out to the Falcons defense. They are absolutely legit. And um, outside of, you know, the, that, it, it was an ugly win because we should have blew this team out. We This game should have been like a 27 or, you know, uh 34 to 10 win. We should have beat this team handily. But we did get the win. We uh, walk off, uh, walk, well, walk out of Raymond James Stadium and get ready for the Titans. We're going to go up to Nashville. And uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, we're first in division, and we got a chance to actually extend this for a while now because the next three games, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I was kind of worried and nervous because we only have four home games and we play a lot better at home. But the next three games, or next four games, actually, you're looking at Titans, Vikings, uh, Cardinals, and Saints. Home, away, home, away, home, away, go back and forth. But um, they, these are winnable games. I mean, I, I thought this you, – you're starting to kind of see if you look at the way this defense plays and you limit the turnovers, which really the only turnovers that I really can say that, you know, that could really be avoided – is um the one with the Desmond ran into the end zone and you know uh you just got to block better as well Caleb McGarry but if you limit the turnovers um you you you're pretty much looking at a, a, a four you know five game win streak win three out of the next five win four out of the next five you know where win three out of the next four I mean you look at the schedule I mean it it, it it's doable because of the defense. So you you're looking at a situation where by the time uh let's say the by the time Thanksgiving come, yo, know, this this team could be eight and three. You know what I'm saying? At the at the most. They could be eight and three by the end of December. That would be insane. And, and nobody would have saw that coming. Now I said it on record that this team could have been 14 and three with with quarterback play good quarterback play and I stand by that because this defense is good as advertised the running game is good as advertised the blocking up front could be a little bit better but the quarterback play is is, is pretty much the reason why um I would say the quarterback play is the reason why we lost at least two of our three games you know so it, it, I mean the Lions game was just I mean that game was just atrocious because of the offensive line but you look at the Panther not the Panther but the Jaguars and you look at the the commanders game that 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 was clearly on the quarterback, in my opinion. You know, so you get you clean that stuff up and for the next four weeks. We could, you know, we could be sitting really pretty at the end of November. Like, I mean, I don't. We got the Saints at home. We got the Vikings at home, 
in the two away games you have uh the Titans and the Cardinals. And they're not easy games, but they're winnable games. So the the that's why I thought us winning this game against the Buccaneers meant a lot. It's one of the reasons because first in the division over five hundred and you can pick yourself up and get be on a roll. And um I a lot of people may not be with me on this, but look, Devin Ritter you know, he, he, he's going to have to play a little bit better. He plays a little bit better. And I know he made some great plays in down the stretch. He's done some good things. He's thrown the ball pretty well, you know, the last game at least, but you limit those turnovers. I mean, like I said, the end of November eight and three, it's a possibility. And I don't like to look that far ahead, but it's a possibility. I mean, like seriously, just, just clean up the quarterback stuff. Now, when we go to Georgia Southern, Georgia Southern has uh, an interesting uh, uh, take in front of them, which we'll talk about that shortly. But the second quarter of the uh, the UL Monroe game, they gave up 24 points in the second quarter, which was absolutely – no, I'm sorry. I take that back. They're not, we scored 24 points in the second quarter, which is absolutely insane. But we end up giving back 14 in the third and fourth quarter. And that, that can't happen. This is another game that we should have beat this team – by at least uh you know 30 points this this game should have been a blowout but nevertheless the the the, the eagles let them hang around and shout out to tyrell davis with the pick six if you see looking at this on the screen him walking into the end zone phenomenal play at the end you know being having a heads up to catch that tip ball and walk into the end zone for a touchdown to seal the game 38 28 and uh it was an ugly win as well because this could have been this should have been another cruising victory similar to the Ball State game, but we had to make it interesting. Now we're going to have to go up against a team which actually I guess you can call it a push. You know it could go either way, but the ESPN slightly have us winning this game. I guess it's because of home field advantage, and um this game is a lot similar it's closer than what it is and i'm gonna do a whole episode on the southern not state whole rivalry situation because this is a huge game for both teams i mean georgia state already has bowl eligibility and uh georgia southern you know they get one more win in this bowl eligibility so um uh, this could be a big deal it, it actually have implications who can possibly win the Sun Belt uh east so this is a huge game Georgia Southern don't have need, need to do much outside of what they're normally doing. I think Georgia Southern has done a phenomenal job throughout the season. Um, the main thing is, just the main thing is Davis Brin just going to have to clean up the interceptions. We threw two. I think he threw two in this last game, and that's too, too many. I mean, he's going to have to do a little bit better. And even with the Monroe game, I mean, he threw, uh, what, did he throw an interception? In, in, not the Monroe game, but the James Madison game, he had two interceptions. You know, and then you go back and you look at, you know, the um, Wisconsin game. You see what happened there. We need a, a game that we need him just to tighten things up. If he does that, we're going to be in good shape. You know, other than that, uh, we win the game 38-28. It wasn't pretty. Defense bailed him out. Defense bailed both of these teams out. And uh, for the most part, and um, it is what it is. I mean, you can't win all games on offense alone. We would like for that to be the case because we hold the ball more than the defense. We shouldn't have to rely on the defense to do too much. But we have a dominant defense. It makes it much better. The Falcons are a product of it. And there are times when Georgia, Georgia Southern has, you know, times when they played pretty good defense. You have to understand that. They've been pretty much on point all season. I mean, they play very good against Coastal Carolina, even though they gave up 28 points. Um, uh, the I, I think for the most part, they've made plays when it counted. You still have the UAB game when they gave up 35, the James Madison game when it was non-existent. UL Monroe, I don't know what to think about that game. I don't think the defense was too bad, but uh, it, it was just a, a point where, the offense had to do something because they just let these guys get in the game in the second half, you know? So uh, I think the defense will just continue to do what they do, which is, you know, bend don't break and the offense just need to dog walk everybody when it comes on, when they come on the field, they just need to run through everybody. I mean, it's not hard to do with an offense as high powered as this. And hopefully with the power of Paulson and if we can pack Paulson, we can really make this difficult for Georgia State. It's going to be a phenomenal game, you know, coming up. It's going to be a really good one. 
one of the bigger games in the uh you know in the in all of college football to be honest with you modern day hate a lot of people don't understand this rivalry even our own fans or well, i can say our own fans but some of the well, i'll say some of the fans and players you know uh i think they're starting to weed out a little bit a lot of the guys who have graduated and moved on um the some of those guys was talking like they didn't think this was a rivalry but i think some of these kids with the new kids are coming in, they starting to realize, hey, wait a minute, Georgia State, you know, these guys are formidable. They're 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 very respectable. You know, you gotta you know take them serious. And this year, I mean, last year I didn't think they were a good team at all, and they beat us. I mean, we turned, we got, you know, we we didn't handle our business. But this year they're very legit. So we're gonna have to bring an A game going down to Paulson, and uh. We're going to have to make things happen. I think if we have anything like the Coastal Carolina game, I think we'll be good money. Now, last but not least, we're going to talk about uh, B. John Robinson. Let me give you my thoughts about B. John Robinson. I think B. John Robinson was held out of the game for other reasons. They probably got some word or they probably had some caution that B. John Robinson could have probably got roughed up a little bit in the game. Um, I, I'm almost certain that was I'm almost certain that was the case. B. John Robinson has been look, making people look crazy throughout this entire season. You know, I mean, some of the moves that he's been putting on some guys or whatever the case may be. This is a rivalry game. Don't want to be showing up at home at Tampa. So I I believe personally, um, I'm almost certain that this was the case. My gut feeling that uh, Coach Arthur Smith kept him out of the game on purpose. Um, I wish they would have never said that it was an injury related. I would have just, I would have just told the the reporters or anybody just said, Hey, look, it was a, a scheme, you know, uh, decision. I mean, we want to run a different scheme, put Bijan in every now and then, but we did not want, we wanted to limit his carries, you know, because the scheme didn't call for it. That's what I would have said for them to say, he's not feeling well. Maybe he wasn't, I'm not going to say, say he wasn't. It just makes it seem suspect because now, now the NFL is about to start looking at the whole how this protocol was followed as far as Bijan Robertson, um, you know, uh, health. You, I mean, you didn't really want to use him as a healthy scratch. I don't think that would have been ideal, but at the same time, you would have put it out there just say, look, it just wasn't going to work with the way the Bucks front seven was. We we decided to use him as a decoy. Have him out there and uh, just to you know show face. Uh, maybe let him touch the ball two or three times. But these are the two things that was a problem for them to say he wasn't feeling well and him to run the ball on the last play of the drive, not the last play of the drive, but the one play on the last drive. And you actually even look at that play; it looked like it wasn't even a play where it was trying to do anything. It was just moving the ball. They moved it for two or three yards, and that was it. And he ran right back out of the out of the lineup. Other times that he was in the game, he wasn't necessarily being used. I just think that Dick should have just been using the scenario like uh, our play calling against this team didn't call for it. And I think they would have been, you know, a lot better off. Another thing before I get out of here, because I know I run a little bit longer than usual. I think what has happened was Arthur Smith probably never really wanted to use Bijan as much as he did in the beginning of this season. But Bijan was so good, it was, you know, it was uh, pretty much uh, a necessity because he played very well. Coach Arthur Smith don't use rookies that much. I mean, even when you look at, let's say, for instance, when Drake London came in or, you know, um, even when Kyle Pitts played, but, you know, Kyle Pitts was a little different because of, what happened with uh Calvin Ridley you know you had to use him but when you have like most rookies they kind of sit them back a little bit even it doesn't matter when you're picked but you know they usually come on later on in the season it's kind of like what happened with Drake London he came on late later in the season of last year and uh I think he's trying to still use that philosophy but I, I feel that if you're going to use it you should actually use it to a point where it's not as obvious because you you put yourself out there saying that he's not feeling well, but you know you you let him run the ball in on the last drive of the game. You you really have to do a little bit better job of that because now, like I said, the NFL is looking down on the protocol. What happened here? 
you know, I, I, I'm not, I personally, I can care less if they use Bijan in this way or whatever the case, I don't care about touches or touchdowns. I'm not a fantasy football guy or, or better. I'm just calling shenanigans because it's not what they said it was. And I just want to win games. And with the luxury of having Cordell Patterson, the luxury of having Tyler Algier really help matters for B. John Robinson. And, and to be honest with you, I would not have been surprised if they did more of that and have Bijan on the outside, like in the slot or whatever, where you don't have to worry about him running between the tackles because he's been getting hit pretty good throughout this season. And he's your number eighth pick, and he's a special talent. You don't want to wear him down so early in his career. I would like to see this guy have a seven, eight, nine, ten year career of doing this type of stuff, and he could walk off in the sunset, you know, um, in a health, in a healthy shade, uh, or or in a healthy light. You know, it, you, that's just how you want it to be. In my opinion, that's how I would want it to be. But I'm gonna get out of here. I think I said too much. Wait, I'm looking at this here. Wait a minute. Appalachian State is three and four. Wow. Man, they're gonna fire that coach. Wow. If you like this commentary, the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about all these topics that I talked about. The Falcons, the Eagles, B. John Robinson. What do you guys thought? I can be found on YouTube and Rumble once again. Uh, also on I'm also on Anchor, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. Um, the website is first and frame rates.com and most stuff that don't make it to the show or I talk about stuff from my gaming channel is on Twitter or X. You can follow me there at VF Baller. All right, y'all, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you guys for your time. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right, y'all, y'all be blessed. Peace.